Hello, I'm Nadia Bilchik, and welcome to Career Cafe. This is the podcast that gives you advice and guidance on how to manage your career, both in terms of interpersonally as well as professionally. This is the podcast that's going to give you tips, tools, and techniques to take your career to the next level. Today, I'm going to be talking to Alan Schaefer. And Alan Schaefer is a multifaceted individual who is a musician and has taken his music and his musical talent into the world of team building and banding people together. So a very warm welcome to Alan Schaefer. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Nadia Bilchik. I am talking to Alan Schaefer, who is the founder and creator of bandingpeopletogether.com. So we're sitting here in this podcast in the beautiful Cafe Van Dome in Sandy Springs, and we're here with beautiful friends and people oh, yes. who are listening to this conversation. We have Jean, we have Adrian, we have Keith, who's doing the audio, we have Jessica, who's assisting, and Anthony, who I just met on Sunday. So you're always welcome, if you're listening to this, to join our live yes. podcast conversations. But Alan... Yes. Before we start on banding people together, I thought let's talk about networking and how you and I met. Well, first of all, you don't, I don't even know if you know all this, so this might blow your mind. You better be, you've got to be ready for this. So we met, uh, it was at actually at 10 degrees south that we were just talking about. This is no accident. Uh, and it was, uh, and you were meeting Kat Cole, uh, who was at Cinnabon at the time. And you said, and when I told you about what I was doing, you said, oh, man, you, you've got to, um, uh, you've got to meet my friend Kat. And actually, we had met, at, I'd met at one of your events earlier, right? So that was running in after. And so um, she introduced me, when you introduced me to Kat, Kat called a guy named Jim Knight, who worked for Hard Rock. And I'll never forget, she said, that's who I want to be when I grow up. And I was like, I got to meet this guy. So I went to Orlando. I sat through Hard Rock's training, got indoctrinated into the Hard Rock culture. Um, I met a guy named Brandon Hill who was just leaving, who has uh, been a huge part of my life. Jim Knight has, uh, actually Jim Knight um, and our and a team of 10 of ours just did an event in the Canadian Rockies. Like, I, I don't even know, so thank you, thank you. Th- I don't even know how... Alan, but it's crazy. the power of connection. But, you know, the power of connection. So just the fact that you met somebody who helped, do you think we do that enough? What is your message to people who are listening about just expanding your capability to connect? So, you know, it's funny. Jessica and I were talking about this on the way over. And ultimately, you know, at the heart of it all, it's it's connecting over... over. So the, the tactic, we call it networking. But I think the people that really like whose lives just get blown up into amazing possibilities are the ones that are truly have a curious heart, are people that really care about somebody else's story. I mean, for me, I'm a songwriter, so like, I wanna know everybody's story, you know? Cause everyone has one. And so, um, it's how I learn, you know? And so like, as human beings, we're, we're built to share, we are built to connect. I mean, for you reggae fans, I'm, I'm Bob Marley fan, I'm into oneness. So you went from a songwriter, just share your journey, and you now do team building. And, you know, again, people who are listening, where do people go wrong? What are some of the (laughs) mistakes they make? Well, it's not our fault that that we go wrong. We're never taught to go right. And I think that's really, I think that's really the, the issue. So... So as, as human beings and as adults, we're expected to get into the workplace or into the world, and we're expected just to be able to work together in some way that makes sense. But that's insane from my perspective for a few reasons. First of all, like we're very complex, dynamic human beings. Sometimes we're rational, sometimes we're not rational. So we have to account for all of it, right? So um, the reason that it's so difficult is, first of all, we've never been taught how to effectively collaborate. And that's because arrogantly, the world doesn't believe we need to be taught because it's viewed as an activity as opposed to an actual repeatable process. So walk us through the kind of team building that you do and how you get people to collaborate, because you do it through music. Yes, yes. So, so, so the activity and, and how we started was, um, you know, I learned about this thing called team building after I read a book called Five Dysfunctions of a Team. And, you know, I, uh, this was all also, by the way, and I think this is really important for people listening. Our business exists 
because I wasn't the best leader and I wasn't the best collaborator. And it was the reason why I have former band members. Like this is, it was my fault. And so um, I became a student of why some bands make it and why other bands don't. And I didn't realize that at the time that it was actually me, um, but um, that was a big part of it. And so um, I learned about this thing called team building and I thought, well, they have all these different flavors and I could just teach people how to write songs. And that's how we started. And then uh, from there, I had this vision of like wanting to measure collaboration on an individual team and organization level. So I found a PhD who wasn't too afraid to partner with the, the crazy band guy. And we built a series of diagnostics called the Collaborative Harmony Index. It tells you how you sound when you're working with others based on famous recording artists, um, how you contribute to the collaborative dynamic of a team through purpose, trust, execution, or energy. And then also behaviors that make you out of tune when working with others. So you take a group of people. So let's say the group who are sitting here watching our interview right now, and you wanted us to become a cohesive functioning team. Would you give us all an instrument, whether we can play an instrument or not? No. Okay. The instrument is knowledge and okay. awareness. Yeah. So we teach the awareness to uh, create alignment to enable high performance. And so we're actually teaching the skill of, of collapse. So we're really teaching awareness. The, the metaphor that's getting used is, is music okay. because what music does is music borrows your limbic brain where emotion and long term and connectivity so happens. So do you play a lot of music oh, in yes. the session? Yes. And, and what we do is we teach all these skills. So by, and then the last part after the skill building is then we actually write songs together using the skills that. So, so ultimately think about this. It is literally a framework for taking divergent views. It's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. I mean, we can have 30 people write a song together in 90 minutes or less. That's remarkable. But I want to go back on something you said. Some bands work and some bands don't. So let's take uh, bands that we know, very well-known bands that are remarkable. Let's take Bono, U2, oh, the everlasting bands. Yeah, it's all called What about long. them? What, what can we learn from bands that work together? Because it's not only skill and talent. You're oh, saying yeah. it's more than that. Oh, it's way more than that. So... Um, Every band that is successful gets to a place of this is our process and how we roll, right? So Coldplay is a great example. Let's Coldplay, um, they actually have an interband agreement. They have rules that they follow. Everybody in the band has a voice. So um, and we actually talk about Coldplay in our, in our okay, sessions. Okay, so what are some of the rules? Well, uh, uh, not too many interviews, um, not... Uh, not sleeping with each other's wives yeah, or girlfriends. Yeah, that, 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 will, that will break up a band very quickly, depending on the type of band. You know, everyone's got their own rules. Um, but, the, um, but here's what's really important. So uh, the singer, Chris Martin, and Johnny Buckland, they lead the creative charge. But here's the key. Everybody gets a voice. Everybody has a say. So... Chris Martin in this video actually talks about, he goes, well, he goes, I have an idea. He goes, and then I show it to Will. And then, goes, then I show it to so-and-so. And he goes, then I show it to Will, the thing I fear the most, because if he doesn't like it, it stops there. Because what they don't want ever is when they're playing in this, you know, the Enormo Dome someplace, they don't want anyone calling it in because their fans deserve more. So you're never getting to that song in the set list. It's like, I don't feel this one. I don't believe in this one. I didn't get to contribute to this one. So the thing is, how do we create an environment in a band or in any organization where people really have a voice? And that is getting taken away in real time very pervasively. So let me tell you one way how a voice gets taken away. Let's say you're my boss and we're supposed to have a weekly meeting, but you're off chasing deals for three months and I can't even have a conversation with you. My voice is actually gone. No, this is very interesting. I mean, you know, I still work at CNN every weekend as an editorial producer. I get to see, we wake up very early in the morning. I get to see a functioning team. The hours are ridiculous. But because we have a very good executive producer who is so respectful of others, the team functions and people don't mind getting oh, yeah. up at that time of the morning. So you go through, is it a day workshop? Is it a half day workshop? It, How does so it, work? it, it, it varies. It can be everything from like a two and a half to three hour kind of keynote with our diagnostics to a half day team building to a full the, day or multiple days. And at the end, even of a two and a half, you're writing a song. Oh, yes. Okay, so have you got any examples of some of the songs? Oh, Oh, and yes. then can you sing them for us? Oh, man. Um, well, here's, so here's what I will tell you. There's, uh, and I should have brought my guitar, but 
So it's also fair to mention that we have this group of rock stars that are amazing artists. So they, they know the music world and they know the real world. So like, for instance, Marty Dotson, who's uh, our resident songwriting guru. I mean, he's written six number ones. I mean, he writes for- So he comes in to oh, your yeah, team yeah. building and he writes the song. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you mean next time we do this, oh, all of, of our, we of have course. to do it in practice. Of course. It takes a little bit of time though. There's a process, right? right. And so. The whole thing about songwriting is it's an alignment exercise. And, and the other thing is the idea that in organizations and teams, we're, we're, we're using force instead of power, right? Force is met with resistance, my wife will tell you. Um, you know, so she's reading a book called Power Versus Force oh, right now. Oh, that's John Maxwell. Power Versus Force is Dr. David Hawkins. Okay. It's, it's super deep. You got to be ready to read well, it. Well, it's about what level you resonate at. Yes. But the idea, funnily enough, Black Panther for me, the one thing I got out of Black Panther was there you have Chala and he's the power. Oh yeah. Um, whereas the Michael B. Jordan character is force. And oh, yeah. what is more successful is power. Right, so so power is infinite and it and it amplifies itself. Ongoing, ongoing power goes through walls. <laughs> you know? Um, force takes is it gets met with resistance and it's like a locomotive. You have to keep putting the coal in to keep it going. Who's got time for that? It's exhausting. So in your sessions, I'm curious, do you have everyone from leadership to, so give us an example of, yeah. I walk into a company, this is who comes in, because I'd like people who are sure. listening to understand how to hire you, sure. what it does, what are the outcomes? Yeah, so so for some, we get hired and they just want an event. They want something They want entertainment. Yeah, they want entertainment, but with some returns so, that, so they can justify it to the organization. Right. With others, we go on a transformational journey. So, um, so, I guess the third part of our business is, is actual consulting. So we do engagement strategy. We do uh, leader, we design leadership development programs for organizations that are saying, we're trying to get here, but we haven't been able to figure it out. And so, our, so we have uh, a lot of um, former clients that uh, hired us that now work with us. So we have this kind of super group mentality because, um, you know, the, the skill set for writing in the room is a different skill set than... Uh, connecting the dots on someone's talent strategy. So we have this really wide range of things. So the, ultimately we kick off the journey with the event because that's this head and heart piece, right? And that's because you, you got to get it here if you're going to really make the needle move. It can't just be here and it can't just be here because we're all, some of us are hardwired like process people. Some of us are heartwired, like we want to connect, right? That's a good one. Heartwired and hardwired. Yeah. Analytical versus emotional. Exactly, exactly. And so we have to account for both of them. So I'm curious with the people who are watching us today, Jean, would you say you're heartwired or hardwired? Heart, Adrian? Heart, Keith, who is recording our podcast, says he is hard. Jessica? She says she's both hard and heart. Uh, and you, Anthony? Yeah. I, I tend to lean more heart. Than heart, heart than, than heart. So, and uh, Crystal, would you say heart? Definitely heart. So it's interesting, so in DISC training that I do, we speak mm -hmm. about, are you more questioning and skeptical, accepting and warm? Mm -hmm. I fall into the category of accepting and warm, heart-wired. I've had to learn to be more hard-wired, mm -hmm. and you are probably a combination as well. I am, I'm a split. Split, I would <laughs> say. I'm a split. Like, if you were looking at also like at disc, because I, I actually learned on disc, and I, like I'm, I'm like I'm off. I'm well, it's interesting. So my point is, we're, we're trying to say what goes wrong with teams. How do we get them to be more cohesive? Would you agree? It begins with this level of awareness. Hundred percent. That, so that's the gap. That's the gap. And, and I think unfortunately, there's a lot of great, uh, well-intentioned people that are making very ineffective stabs at it. Right. So. Um, People don't want to learn another competency. People don't want to learn, this is how you activate this behavior. And so essentially what we've done is we've, we've taken Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be a part of something uh, bigger than themselves and experience the impact. And so we've basically taken that and we we're just activating it with music, which we're all pre-wired. And, and it's so, interesting you say that because in the world of professional development, we say this. People know the stuff, but it doesn't mean they apply it. Yeah. So what you're doing is by bridging the gap, getting people to work together, create the song, create this music, you're doing what they know they should be doing. Right. Um, as we say this, any questions from our illustrious audience, our vast audience who is watching this taped? Any specific questions you have for Anthony, uh, Anthony that you have for Alan at this point? What do you find 
find to be the first pain point when you go into... He says, what do you find the first pain point huh. when you, you walk the into these resistance. organizations, the most resistance? It's ego, which I've heard it stand, stands for edging greatness out. Um, and not my words, somebody else's words. And, and what I will tell you is um, we just make it, the, the music piece of this is what makes it safe. I have actually asked our clients, and as a, a, a lady named Queen who works with us now when she was at Cisco, and we were working with their leaders, and she was like, you know, whether you realize it or not, Alex, because you make it immediately safe for people to open up and be themselves. And that's like, if you can't move someone to that place of uh, being honest with themselves, they won't mm -hmm. be honest with others. So that's what the difference between someone who's coachable or not, right? And so ultimately it is a very pragmatic, everyday type of awareness that we're teaching that, you know, it's funny, when I started this, if I said awareness, I mean, I was already the touchy-feely band guy. I had, you know, it was like right. swimming. I was like going uphill. Now it's like consciousness and everything. And it, now it's, 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 it's cool. So you go in there with a group of people who have the instruments. So you're not asking people to sing. Oh, you're not yeah. asking to people to play instruments if they can't. No, but we have people that will get up who, who do play. And so I worked, we did a, a session with some leaders at Netflix at the end of last year. And... One of the guys in the session played guitar. One of the um, uh, ladies uh, was a singer. And after we actually finished the song, the two of them got up and played it. I was like, all right, well, there you have it. So that's wonderful because I think often in an organization, we come in and we bring a part of ourselves, not the whole part of ourselves. And it's so much more effective if people do get to know your authentic oh, self. Yeah. So interesting, when we look at organizations who are doing this well, do you have, so you spoke about some bands. Give us examples of people doing it well and people who have broken up because of dysfunction. Uh, so in terms of bands or, or organizations? Let's we, have both. Well, so in organizations, I am, I, I'm smitten with Netflix at the moment. Uh, they, you know, they allowed me to, to look under the hood a, a bit. And I mean, I'll tell you this, in their sort of manifesto as it, as it is, uh, they don't tolerate brilliant jerks. I mean, how telling is that? I'm not saying I was brilliant in the band, but I was the jerk, you know? So, um, you know, that's very derailing. They realize that, like, no matter how talented you are, if you are derailing others, you're, you're killing their groove. Okay, so is it written in, in the manifesto, or it's just known that you cannot be a jerk? You know, it's known, but I think it's actually written. The other thing about Netflix is, so as organizations scale, um, most organizations want to have more processes and more constraints. They've done the exact opposite. They're actually empowering people more than instead of closing people down. And that is, I mean, you know. That's, that's so good to know. So on the subject of uh, Netflix, can we just derail for a moment? Sure. And discuss our favorite Netflix series. Oh, so, oh, oh. Because I have just watched Collateral. Excellent. Collateral is with the, it's just remarkable. Wow. I just finished it. And Marseille is excellent. I've learned Turkish from watching Turkish Wow. Netflix. So I have to tell, so my wife and I, we well, watch, not fluent, but we watch, words. on a good week, we can watch anywhere from five to ten documentaries. Okay. So have you watched The Roosevelt's? No, uh, I saw The Roosevelt's, I think, on PBS. Okay. Um, this past week, we just, I just watched, uh, we watched Elmo, the guy behind Elmo, which was brilliant tell us about him and what we can learn from him because this is a podcast well, about learning he had a very rock and roll name kevin clash uh and he came from the projects in baltimore and had an affinity for um for for puppets and things and what's cool is when he made his first puppet he saw his father's coat and he went and without permission he cut it and made this this monkey out of this coat and here's the for all you parents listening here was the moment of truth right if, the, if, if he had gotten in trouble, we might not ever have known Elmo in the world. But they said, look, it's cool, just ask us next time. And he ultimately got to work with Jim Henson, and, but he got taken under the wing of a guy named Kermit, probably where Kermit the Frog came from, but designed all the big Muppets and things and really showed him the path and showed him the way. And that's, that's what I think is also really amazing, just to bring it back to kind of the connecting and the networking. The world needs more guides. World needs more guides, more producers to help people make the whatever great record they're trying to make. 
And I don't think guides, as in G U I D E S, not G U I S. Like produ yeah, producers. Yes. Everybody's trying to make a record. We're all artists, and everyone needs a great producer. We need more Keith. Keith is yeah. producing this podcast we need, as know, we speak. It's you know, uh, and so um, I also watched a thing called Orion, which was a guy that was. You would think on the surface was an Elvis impersonator, but he just looked and sounded like Elvis, and all the music that he made was sounded like Elvis, and it was after Elvis had passed. And so the guys who owned um, Sun Records, where uh, Elvis was on, they created this character that wore a mask, and there were people that thought it was Elvis that had like faked his own death, and like, and it was real. Like my wife and I were like, how do we not know about this? So, so obscure stories. I mean, the famous, you know. Obscure stories nobody knows about. I loved searching for Sugar Man, which isn't on Netflix yet, mm. but maybe will be. And it's another great story. We grew up in South Africa with his name, which he. Oh yes. And then somebody finds a story, and you go, "How do we not know?" It's it's incredible. So so one of the things that we're really big on around at banding, or or just also for me personally, it's um, you know we look through a lens of probability, all of us, but uh, probability is limiting. Possibility is infinite. And so um, we all believe that we're more open-minded than we are in many cases. So um, that's also part of, I think, what a guide is and what a producer is. It helps people see things that maybe they're not always able to see so they can believe. So I'm asking our audience who's watching if they've got any other questions. And while they think about that, I want to ask you, you are writing a book. Yes. So tell us about the book. I, I, you know, it's so interesting hearing your background because you come from a unique perspective of for those of us who are just joining us or start listening. I'm talking to Alan Schaefer. He is bandingpeopletogether.com. It's about more than team building. It's about collaboration. It's about connection. It's about being more productive because you have a real relationship with the people you work with. Yes. It's networking for success on steroids. Yeah. Yes, and it's actually, and you know, and it's what really part of what we do is we shorten communication cycles. So when we were talking earlier about we're all wired differently, you know, because I know you're wired a certain way, I can modify how we communicate so we can get it done in one conversation instead of six. Although I would love to have six conversations. Right, with you, but that's a very true thing. But yeah. having said that. So we're getting to the, oh, the book, oh, but yes. conversations, but don't you think verbal conversations, you can get it done in one. Yeah. What is happening is people are emailing and texting. How often, if you uh -huh. just, I mean, I know it's the famous pick up the phone, but I have started with texting the minutes. I can sense it's going a little bit awry, oh, even yes. on a social level. Uh, a friend of mine recently has started her own business and needs some help. And I can just hear with the texting, the way it's going, I just need to pick up the phone and hear the voice. So we have a rule. So we have an intra-band agreement that defines people in process and, and banding, and we something that we help organizations implement. And on the process side, one of our rules is, after two emails, if they if there's not clarity, then it's a phone call or a meeting. Period. But that's got to become End because of sentence. That's yes, it. no negotiation. And I think personally <laughs> and professionally, I think a lot of even, and I'm talking about whether it's. Uh, a dinner date, you know, somebody wants to go here, somebody else wants to go there. Just the confusion that happens <laughs> and the sense of anxiety and then people are offended and it really is just so much is misunderstood in the written word. Well, it's funny and it's, it's silly for me to be telling a communication expert like yourself, but for everybody listening, you know, if you want to see how pervasive the lack of understanding and perception is uh, when communicating digitally, just just watch a, just take a look at any debate or political debate on, on Facebook. Um, I've actually had to, to stop because people can't track even with a point, right? Um, and so it's, um, you know, when you take away body language, when you take away tone, you've taken away 90%, you know? And, and so, I mean, that's like, that's like, that's like drunk texting at night with your, with, your, with your boyfriend or girlfriend that you're having a fight with. That's insane. So the book is about? So the book is about, uh, it's a five-step process for uh, collaborating effectively. Can and we it, hear what they are? So step one is awareness of self and others, but a very particular pragmatic type of awareness. Um, part two, uh, step two is uh, operating agreements, things like the interband agreement. Um, three is alignment, like how do we get to meaningful alignment? Because you can't just will people into alignment. Um, step four is maximizing contribution. So everybody brings something to the mix, and it's your job as a leader or as an organization to amplify the heck out of that. You don't want, if you're going in to make a record and uh, we need someone to play slide guitar, 
I, and you're a tuba player, I don't want you to come in and play slide guitar, but that's what's actually happening. And so that's met, that's force, and that's met with resistance. And then step five is, um, you can't just set the mixing board and walk away and expect the sound to stay intact. It is not static, it is dynamic, as is life and humanity. So you have to have a plan for adjusting in real time. And so there's stabs at this in the world, things like agile. Well, you can't really be that agile by forcing people to go, you're gonna use agile um, without having the deep behavioral understanding of how to navigate as what we call a rational player in the collaboration game. So everyone has to have all the information about, like, so Chris Martin knows that he's got to communicate or pitch this song a certain way to his drummer Will, and that there's a certain dynamic and they're aware of it, so they don't, they don't circumvent it, they don't ignore it, they don't try and make it something it isn't, they go, well, this is the dynamic and we're gonna figure out how it works for us. And this is our process for this band. You know, you could do part two for families, right? Oh. You know, families. I recently heard a speaker and he <laughs> says, his last name was Ford. And he says, the Fords know, we are a family who reads and is curious. We've got a mantra. And I thought, how many families have a mantra for how they behave? We're a family who doesn't text at the dinner table. Yeah, so I will tell you this. We use this framework of voice contribution commitment uh, to fix Thanksgiving in our family. And did it work? Oh, yes. I think uh, a lot of people want to be reading this book. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the next book I write, which is a parable about fixing the holiday. Yeah, because it's tough. <laughs> I'm you not know, kidding. It works. You know, there's the wonderful foundational book about uh, dealing with others, The Four Agreements, Don Ruiz Miguel. Oh, love and that. it's so brilliant. You know, don't take things personally. Don't make assumptions. Listen to your dialogue, be impeccable with your word, and then finally you do your best, and your best is different in sickness and in health. But if people didn't make assumptions, and they didn't take things so personally. Oh yeah. You know, the words I watch in the workplace, the amount of time that is wasted because people are offended. Oh yeah. Well, that, that's the other thing here, which is um, we have been tricked into believing that perception is reality. And perception is just one's reality. So it's like, uh, you know, we all believe in the gold, you know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto, unto you. That's the biggest blind spot on the planet. That's, and it's, I don't mean to offend, from, it's, it's arrogant. It's basically saying, you know what? What's valuable to me is gonna be valuable to you, you or you. So I'm, I'm about the platinum rule. Treat others how they wanna be treated. And this idea that perception, just cause I see it, just cause I see you guys here does not mean you're actually there. My, my brain is, my eyes, my brain may be telling me you're there, but you may be there, you might not. And so there's this, there's this thing that happens that our egos project. So there's truth, which we can all agree, like, you can't bend the truth. The truth is just the truth, right? It's the its own thing. But our egos are project this lens and this fog that makes us not be able to see the truth. So you were asking earlier about kind of like one of the things we have to do is we have to capture the truth in the room. And so when we write the songs, we are literally capturing whatever truth is in that room with that group of people in that moment is exactly what we are capturing. So we are, we, are, we are harnessing souls. Excellent. Any questions, any thoughts for Alan while he tells us how we can reach him, number oh, one? Yes. And then I understand you're singing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, so can yes. we have one verse, even no guitar, or just one line? Hard to do without a, um, without a reference or a note. Oh, say can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Got it. Oh my gosh! So, and how can we reach you? Oh, uh, so I'm Alan, A L A N, at bandingpt.com. And I, I have to give a shout out to Graham. Uh, I'm, I'm singing at uh, Bryant Denny Stadium, the football stadium in Tuscaloosa. Um, for an Air Force retirement, who uh, is a gentleman who I met through another friend who um, was a fan of my band Five Star Iris. And so for anyone's curious, F-I-V-E-S-T-A-R-I-R-I-S, you can Google it. But um, email me at alanbandingpt.com. I will get back to you. I'm here to help amplify anything that you are trying to do. And the website is bandingpeopletogether.com. You got it. We love bandingpeopletogether.com here at Korea Cafe. You are welcome to join us. I'm Nadia Bilchik, nadiaspeaks.com. 
and please listen, stay tuned and be part of our community.